Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to this video. Now I know a lot of you come over here by just reading the title and many of you are the fan of Magnus Carlsen. So the first thing I need to clarify over here is the purpose of this video is not to offend Magnus Carlsen, his fan club or his countrymen. I myself is a big fan of Carlsen and by showing you this video I want to illustrate an important point that even the world's best has bad days in their life and as a chess player if you remain positive and play good chess on the board then you can outplay them. Now looking at the Magnus Carlsen and his talent there's always question comes into the mind that is this Mozart of chess ever lost a game very quickly. So I'm not talking about over here like his blitz game or the rapid game but I'm talking about his classical game where both the side has ample time to think about their game and still loses in let's say under 25 or 20 moves. Well I have done some research on this and I found out that the quickest loss for the Magnus was within 15 moves. Shocking right? But it's true. Well, you may think when Magnus was young, this game was happened. Well, that's not the case. The worst part is when this game was played, Magnus was already a GM. Let's see how all this happened. Paletti start with the move d4 and Magnus responds with the move knight to f6. And after the move c4, Magnus plays his pet line Nimzo Indian with the move e6. White goes with the main line that is knight to c3 and bishop to b4 happen on the board. Now because this game is very short, I'm going to conduct a training exercise for you. So what you have to do is at certain point, I'll ask you to pause the video and find out the move of the white. And if your move match with the move played in the game, then you have to score 10 points. But if your move haven't matched with the game, then you just have to give zero points. At the end, we are going to calculate your points and let's see you have the potential of beating world's best. Okay, first critical point, I like you to pause this video and find out what is the best reply by white. Okay, I hope you find this move that is queen to c2. It is a dual purpose move where queen not only protecting the knight and do not allow a double pawn but it also stopping knight to e4 idea. Carlsen continue here with the move d5. Now d5 is considered to be the most sharpest line against queen to c2 variation. Apart from the d5 other moves are castle on the king side or c5. These are the modern moves but d5 says itself that Carlson wants a very sharp game and he's playing for the win. Here White took this pawn and now comes the surprising gambit c5. Now this is a very tricky move and White should know exactly what he's going to do about it. Before one year I had this line in my repruta and I had a very mixed result in my game. My opponents who doesn't know how to handle this line I get some amazing victories but on the other hand the opponents who knows how to handle this line I had a lot of struggle so it's a very double edged line. Now comes the second critical moment of the game. Kindly pause the video and find out how you're going to continue from this position. Okay I hope you find this move that is d capture c5. Now instead of d capture c5 if white wants to be greedy and hang on to his pawn, then he can continue with the move d capture c6. But this is what exactly black wants. Because after queen captures, pawn captures and bishop captures, you can already see black has 4 pieces in the game. And just for the one pawn, this is a tremendous compensation. Now after d capture c5, black plays knight captures d5. So if allowed, then black will certainly double white's pawn. So white has to stop this. So white plays the move bishop to d2. And now black get his material back after bishop capture c5. 
Now comes the third important move. This is very crucial because we already reached to the half point of the game and it doesn't look like white is doing anything. So my question is, how are you going to continue? Congratulations if you find this wonderful move that is knight captures d5. The point is black cannot capture with the pawn because his bishop is hanging. So black has to forcefully capture with his queen. And then white is going to play this move which you need to identify which move white was aiming for. Okay, I hope you find this move that is e4. So it's a developing move with a tempo. Because now again black has to move his queen somewhere and white is getting his initiative. As per the computer the best move over here is either queen to c6 or queen to g6. But in the game as the Carlson was feeling very aggressive he played the move queen to d4. Ball is in your court. How are you going to continue? I hope you find this wonderful move that is castle on the queen side what a wonderful move to play black has some severe difficulties because you can already see this bishops are loose and white has a simple threat now of bishop to e3 and nabbing the piece so black has to respond very accurately which in fact Carlson did so Carlson played over here knight to d7 so protecting both the bishop now instead of knight to d7, if black become greedy and play moves such as queen to f2, then after knight to h3 attacking the queen and queen to d4 and bishop to g5, the game is over because black has to give up the queen as if the queen moves away, then rook to d8 will leads to the checkmate. So black has to play very precise moves. After knight d7, now comes the move of the game. Can you spot White's next reply? Okay, I hope you find this move that is Bishop to b5. Once again, White is renewing the threat of pinning this knight and thus threatening Bishop to e3 and nabbing the piece. So again, Black has to play very precise moves. And I think at this precise moment, Carlson failed to spot the danger in the position. And this is a very good example that if you pressurize your opponent, then even one of the best in the world can get annoyed and played a bad move. Under pressure, Carlson plays this horrific blunder that is castle on the king's side. Now before proceed, I like to point out the danger in this position. So for example, let's say black continue over here with the move a6. Then comes bishop to e3 attacking the queen. And after queen to e5, we can simply capture this bishop. Kindly note, not bishop captures d7 because after bishop captures, bishop captures and rook to c8, black regain his material with an advantage. So that's why in this position, bishop captures c5 is a most accurate move. Because after pawn captures, bishop to d6, queen check, and king to b1, white's wonderful bishop has stopped black to castle on the king's side. That means black king will remain in the center. And in fact, if you verify this position with the engine, it will give good amount of advantage to the white. Now, amazingly enough, black can still survive from this position. And the best move over here is bishop to e7 afterward the sample line can run like this so bishop to e3 queen to b4 queen to a4 and after queen captures bishop captures and a6 this position is equal i think the only reason carlson done the castle because i definitely think that he only considered the move bishop to e3 where he created a nasty trap. So let's see this. So if white played over here bishop to e3, which is a blunder move, because of the following sequence that is queen to b4, bishop captures, bishop captures with a check, and after pawn captures and bishop captures, white cannot capture this bishop, as after rook captures d7, rook to c8, skewering 
queen and a king and if white try to save the queen after rook to c7 then there comes queen to e1 check queen to d1 rook captures check and after king to b1 and queen captures d1 it's a checkmate so now the big question is on your side what is wrong with the moo castle okay i hope you find this wonderful move that is bishop to c3 and black is busted the simple reason is this queen has no space to go the only move left over here is queen captures f2 which is played in the game but after queen captures bishop captures and bishop captures d7 black played a token check that is bishop to e3 and after king to c2 Carlson realized that he is a piece down for not a single compensation so at this point he resigned so there you have it a simple but effective play by white putting black in a lot of pressure and shows us that even world's greatest can be knocked down by playing accurate moves now it's time to calculate your points if you score more than 60 percent then definitely you have the potential of becoming a good chess player and if you score less than that then you are not looking at the right direction and you need some improvement well thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment on my video and i'll meet you in my next episode very soon bye and take care I hope you find this move that is queen to e a check boom boom <laughs> so sacrificing the whole queen these are two very very effective plans by the white and please note white has a tremendous space advantage because of this c4 and d4 moves